I'll just start out just letting y'all know I'm, I don't know who's going to win, but yeah. now I notice I don't see any Ravens uh, jerseys in here. I don't see any Baltimore Ravens jerseys in here this week. They had a bunch of them last week. Y'all got it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody say, let's go. So now you heard me tell the story of, uh, all right, yeah, I like that. <laughs> Y'all remember me tell the story about Tom Brady? Yes. Guess who's the modern day Tom, Bur Tom Brady? Patrick Mahomes. Now, let me tell you what religious people, how religious people are. When they see me pull out a jersey, they start thinking about, well, what about the Bible? What about scriptures? They're missing the whole thing. Because... One of the things if God sent you here is one of the things to teach you how to connect with people. And relationship is all about people. Is is no such thing as Jesus being a shy shepherd. Can you imagine that? Or Jesus put allow, allow people to put uh, labels on them. Anybody like you're an extrovert? Somebody say I'm an extrovert. Somebody say introvert. No, I'm whatever I need to be so I can do whatever God called me to do. Y'all got it? Stop letting people put labels on you. And the people, the crazy thing is when you believe what people say. Man, I've been stopped believing knucklehead people. I don't even give them the time of day. Did y'all understand what I'm saying? Stop responding to crazy texts. Some of y'all be going back and forth on texts. That's crazy. Y'all niggas. So look at your neighbor and say, cut it off. Y'all ready? Let's go. Somebody say, let's go. All right. So no matter where you are, who you are, I need you to be engaged in this. I need you to be engaged in this. I need you to really be engaged and be active listeners. Also, I need all of you all that think you know everything. <laughs> there are a bunch of people that think they know a lot. Their, their lives don't show it, though. So they don't realize it. So what God will do, he have, the Holy Spirit will have me say that so they can arrest their normal function where they are just sitting here over and over again but not seeing spectacular results. I'm not just talking about getting by. I'm talking about where you know that your life has been totally changed. Where the power of God, you've experienced the power of God, and you know that your Heavenly Father, since you've been born again, can do anything, can change anything, no, long, no matter how long you've been dealing with it. He's a God that will show up real in your life if you allow Him to. I would say, let God manifest himself through your life. In other words, let God do it. And I'm going to tell you some stories of some things God did just this week because I let him manifest. The Holy Spirit is the key. The person of the Holy Spirit is your key. He is the one. You don't have to bear fruit of the Spirit. You just got to yield. Yes. Did y'all hear what I said? Yes. You don't have to do it. All you got to do is yield and he'll help you be nice. He helped me this week. He'll help you be kind. He helped me do it this week. He helped me overlook some insults. He helped me do it this week. He helped me better understand Pastor T this week. Come on, somebody. Y'all real quiet in here, man. Some of y'all just chilling. I don't mess. I ain't down with no chilling people. I'm looking for people that's ready to take this thing over. I'm, I'm looking for people that's ready to change uh, this whole region. You got it? I don't care what you've been through. I don't care what, what sin was in your life. I'm saying today, let's go. Y'all got it? Let's do what? Let's go. Now, why am I doing it? I'm taking my time because if I don't get you out of passive listening, this will be another message on top of a message that has done nothing in your life. Y'all got it? I got to see some results, man. Y'all got it, Pastor T? We saw some results this week. Am I right? We, we're going to see some results next week, and you should be seeing them. It shouldn't be just the pastor. No, I need to see y'all with results. We need y'all going to the results wall over there. And we need y'all to say, well, God, there the guy came through the line after the first service. He said, Pastor, my, my student debt is gone. Amen. See that little, that little, little passive, little, little passivity? Okay, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars are just canceled. You got it? I just canceled. You just canceled. You understand that? You understand that? Here's the thing. 
Nothing works. Come on, build this foundation, Pastor Nias. Pastor Nias, build this foundation for these people that are sitting here hearing this stuff over again. Quote the Bible, can, be, can impress people with the Bible, but don't believe nothing. None of this stuff works if you don't believe it. I want to get as serious as I can. You sit your behind here all this time. You've been here for years, and you, you talk about you believe this stuff. You quote the word, get involved in spiritual conversations, uh, religious conversations, and you don't see this stuff in your life because you really don't believe this. I know God can change somebody's nature. I know he's a healer. I know he's a healer. I know he's a healer. I know it. But I didn't know it until I believed it. You got it? When I say you'll never be broke another day in your life, you got to believe it. Because the first thing you start thinking about is you as a human, well, how that's going to happen? I don't know. I don't know about that. He's just saying that. I don't need nothing from you. I want to make that very clear. No, really. Our God supplies all of our needs. I'm not saying that as an insult. I'm not saying that as anything. In other words, nothing I tell you is to get you to give me nothing. I'm trying to get you out this rat race. I'm trying to get you out this, this uh, inflation. As soon as you get a raise, they take it through inflation. I'm trying to get you out of just living an ordinary life. I'm trying to get you out of living like you're born again, but you're still living like you're just on the earth. Like you really got some supernatural in you. Somebody say, I got some supernatural in me. <laughs> now, I can say it with conviction, and you can tell when somebody's telling you something, but they got no conviction for it. They just a parrot. See, God not looking for echoes. He listens. He looking for voices. And a voice is somebody who literally has taken the word and has experienced it. Y'all got it? So I got a bunch of stuff I want, I want to start right now. Be careful, and I'll, I'll, I'll share this. It's just coming to me in this real time. Be careful with people who put labels on you. Let me give you an example. I, I recently found out that some, some young person, and there's a younger person, found out that as part of our leadership team were in fraternity or sorority or something like that. And they decided, we, we're not just going to come here because they, they're part of fraternity sorority. Can I tell you, all you religious people something? And when I say religious, re- religious people know about the Bible, and you would think they, they know the Lord. Yeah. But if you follow their lives, I'm talking about their everyday lives, you're not going to see corresponding results. Because... They're, they're, what's that term, swallow a gnat, something with a camel? Strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. In other words, that's what the religious people were doing. Can you imagine, Tiffany, yes, sir. you sitting in church with a half an arm, and there's no way for this arm to ever be healed except for the guy that's standing up teaching, named Jesus. Can you imagine that he touches you, your arm comes back whole. And the participators come ask Jesus, why are your disciples not washing their hands before they eat? (laughs) Can you imagine? Can you imagine how crazy that is? You'd be surprised of people seated right here. I experienced it. And I shared this earlier. There was a couple came up to me, and and this couple may hear me talk about this, and I'm saying to you, hopefully you don't leave the church. But my point is to make a point about what I'm talking about. I had a well-meaning couple that came share with me, and they literally said to me, I, and I'm, why am I doing this? I like to tell you stuff that I see. And I'm the type, I'm going to share it, not because I'm trying to talk about anybody. I'm trying to talk about a point. And you got to be careful. I had this couple come to me, and they said to me, I was with you until I saw the Christmas stuff. Now, you may be looking, what are you talking about? In other words, the Christmas stuff was associated with bowing down or paganism. The Apostle Paul said this. Listen to me. And by the way, I, get, I, have, I have a righteous indignation when I see that stuff. And I have a passionate conversation. Sometimes it's my passion talking. But I'm seeing, because it's the same people when I was going to church and they were dropping us off, they didn't care about me getting saved. All they were just having was church. And they're getting up here with this testimony time, and the lady getting up singing and can't sing. 
What I'm saying to you, they had no regard. I'm not knocking it because I got some seed of the word. They had no regard for other people's lives and who's sitting there hoping that this stuff is real in the church because it's all hell out here. So please, if I come in this church, I'm not looking for perfect people, but I am looking for sincere. You got it? I'm looking for some people that, 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 that can understand that it's about this relationship with Jesus Christ. And then God, just like fraternity sorority, some people, somebody have written me different times about the fraternity sorority. What are you talking about? We ain't bowing down to no trees. Just because other people in the world. And I remember one of the guy who discipled me. He, he did a great job, and then he said, well, y'all know you got to, you got to, don't, you can't do Christmas anymore. And so we follow him, we follow him, he, he said, yeah, we ain't going to do, we ain't going to do Christmas, we ain't do Christmas. Man, we were miserable. <laughs> <laughs> and we weren't miserable because we were believing those Santa Claus and all that junk. It ain't no Santa Claus. My children know we bought these gifts. It's Jesus' birthday. Y'all got it? You know what the Bible says the principle is? Whatever you do, do it as unto the Lord. Now, he ain't talking about no foul stuff. He's talking about stuff that split hairs, that split churches, that cause a person to get stuck in their old age. Instead of being here in the fresh rain of God's word today, that the apostle's mindset, Jesus, the chief apostle, is to establish heaven on earth and get that religious stuff out of you. Not washing your hands will never cause you to be a dirty person. What it calls you, he says, man, what y'all talking about? Not washing my hands. He said, it's what come out of you. He said, what comes out of you defile you, make you unusable for me. Not some external, because they were talking about, we can't believe you eat this. The Bible says, get this, this in your Bible. All things can be eaten. How much? How much? I'm saying that because they got people sitting here, they'll be telling you, well, you know, they, now they're a vegetarian. And now, now they're judging Christians because Christians eating some pork or uh, eating meat. Now, I don't eat a whole lot of that, but God says nothing is to be refused if it is received with prayer and thanksgiving. Amen. That's what the Bible says. And Paul said, for those that know the truth, the truth is what he just said. You can eat. Now, the key is moderation. The key is pay attention to your body. There are certain things I've eaten that I notice don't work well with my body. So I'll make the adjustment. What is God saying? It ain't what you don't do. And don't do this. Don't do that. Eve, don't touch the tree. Don't, eat, don't touch the fruit. That's not what it is. It's the relationship. It's the relationship. It's the relationship. It's the relationship. It's what? It's the relationship. It ain't the tide. It's the relationship to the tide. It ain't generosity. It's the relationship. My father generous. So I'm a stunt like my daddy. Yeah. Why? Because he gives seed to the sower. So I don't preach on it a lot. But you're not going to have abundance if you're not generous. Amen. And you got a soul to grow. Amen. Don't let anybody ain't nobody trying to, I ain't trying to get no Rolls Royce, nothing off of you. And I don't judge people. You buy what you want. Y'all don't say nothing. The rappers got that perverted music in the Maybach and all that kind of stuff. I don't care about none of that. But what if these kids being impressed by that stuff because nobody taught them that God will take care of you, that Jesus got the bag, you ain't got to chase it. What if, what if God, and what if we say that in the church? What these young people thinking, man, I'll get you a pair of Air Force Ones. God, I'll teach you how to invest. I'll teach you how to take that little and make it more. I'll teach you this, right? God will teach you this. We ain't, ain't got to be broke, people teaching the spiritual stuff. You know God, you know he didn't really mean riches. He, he, he made you, gave you his riches and took your poverty. And then people spiritualize it. Well, you know he ain't really talking about money. All I know is this. My daddy wasn't broke. My mama wasn't broke. And we weren't broke. So if your daddy rich, why are you broke? Because surely you got to know, unless your dad is perverted, that he don't want his kid broke. So he says crazy stuff like a cattle on a thousand hills of his. You mean I can't get one cattle? <laughs> then he says crazy stuff, the silver and the gold is mine. You mean I can't get a dollar? It's crazy. You're going to get the truth in here. Not from a perfect dude. 
But a dude who's going to have serious conversations and let nobody come in here and break this word and how it's coming, and nobody, and I'm serious about it, because you got, you got people that have come with that wrong, stinking, unproductive thinking. And if you let them have a voice, they will spoil the new converts. They will cause them to get focused on the wrong stuff. The only reason people fail is broken focus. Yeah. 